and welcome to another edition of Community Central, the podcast where we talk about things that are going on in and around Red Hat, the Red Hat open source community ecosystem, um, and really kind of answer your questions about things that are new and exciting that are happening in Red Hat. My name is Brian Proppett. I am with the Red Hat Open Source Program Office, and I am pleased to be able to introduce our guests, but just in one second, the usual housekeeping notes. Um, you will be able to ask questions of our guests at the end of their presentation that they will do. I ask you to use the Q&A tool um, provided in prime time. Vote on the ones that you like the best, um, and we will ask those questions in the order of most liked um, after the presentation. So with that out of the way, I'd like to introduce our two guests today. We have Jason Beard, who is a technical account manager with the Central Region in North America. And we have Andreas Gersmeyer, who is a software engineer and the platform team that works specifically with PCP and Grafana. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Brian. All right. Hello. Jason. Yeah, hi. All right. If you're ready to start, um, Jason, take it away. All righty. Thank you very much. So just again, my name is Jason Beard. I'm a technical account manager. Uh, let me present my. So today I'd like to talk to you about uh, Performance Copilot. Uh, Performance Copilot is, I think, a gem of a piece of software uh, that uh, doesn't get enough credit for what it does. So what is Performance Copilot? Performance Copilot is a open source uh, monitoring and management uh, suite of tools for system level performance. So it's um, it comes standard in all the RHEL, the Red Hat Enterprise Linux repos. You can actually get it for other Linux distributions out, out there in the wild. Uh, so it, what can it monitor? PCP can monitor a lot of things. It can pretty much monitor anything uh, out there, the hardware, core OS, services, applications. Uh, there's what they call agents that do the actual performance itself. Um, if there's not a, a an agent available, there's, there's tools and resources available that will allow you to create something for your needs. This is a very high level overview of the PCP architecture. Uh, PCP has got a lot more pieces in there, but I was going for more high level here. So PC, PMCD is your performance metrics collector daemon that runs. Um, it actually communicates to the agents that are out there. Uh, PM logger, which does archive logging, will actually connect into PMCD also and uh, gather those particular metrics and record them and log them to a file. So we have here, we have a performance uh, metrics namespace. Uh, this is just an, uh, it's a tree hierarchical format of the metrics that are actually being recorded on the system. It starts with what they call the root level and goes down from there. Uh, they emit uh, the root actually, so it's easier to type and easier to see, but it, it still exists. And here's, here's a lot of the major components. So you have the, the Nurse Collector Daemon, which actually talks to the performance uh, metrics domain agent. I mean, the Collector Daemon talks to the domain agents. So the, the agents are actually what actually um, gathers the metrics from different sources, whether it be the kernel or a service that's running. So it, it actually gathers the metrics and it sends them off to PMCD. They do communication back and forth. Uh, you have the PMIE, which is Performance Metrics Inference Engine. Uh, that's a whole other subject within itself. It can actually evaluate the metrics that are, are being collected and set up rules to perform different functions with alarms, uh, automate system management things. PM Logger is, again, your logger that actually uh, logs all the data, all the metrics data for you. Uh, default is 14 days, but you can adjust that as needed. Your PM proxy it actually uh, it's a REST API. This archive discovery uh, it's what actually feeds some of your more GUI tools. It'll feed uh, Redis, so you can pull it into a Kafana plugin. Uh, 
uh, installation, uh, the performance copilot generally calls a host two different kinds. There's a collector and then there's a monitor. Collectors is what's running the PM CD that talks to all the agents. And the monitoring host you can set up as actually gathering or archiving all the data from the collector host. So you can set monitoring host to collect up to, uh, this general suggestion is up to a thousand nodes per monitoring host. And you can archive all that data there and then you can use it for reference later. If uh, you're looking for the latest and greatest, there's a PCP repo out there. It's, it's honestly not necessary. If it comes standard, like I said, all with all rail. Uh, it's been around since uh, rail 6.6. .6. There's no extra uh, subscriptions or anything needed. It's, it's standard. Uh, default installation, collector host is, uh, you just go and install PCP zero conf minus Y. And this will actually go ahead and install a default set of uh, PM and DA agents. It'll set up PMCD, it'll in start the service, it'll enable the service. Uh, it will actually set up the default config files for you and you're up and running. Now, if you need to connect to uh, a remote server or a remote server's connecting in, you need to open the firewall and you have to set up some SE Linux uh, and firmware range for performance copilot. On the monitor host, you do the same same zero conf installation, but you can also load the Grafana and Grafana plugins. And PM proxy will also be loaded. You'll have to enable and start those services and you'll have to allow them through the firewall when you want to connect to them or if you want to connect to these. Uh, under the hood for Grafana actually uses uh, Redis for some of its information to feed into Grafana. Uh, you can use vector to also if you want to with the Grafana, you can set up a learning in Grafana. So if you need to install additional PDMAs, there's there's quite a few PMDAs. Even even a default install of PCP with the uh, agents, you get anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 metrics that are available just with a default install. So there's a lot of stuff out there and you can add more as you need to. So, uh, on a particular host that I, I have, I have Podman running. I have a couple of containers using Podman. So you just download just a package install as normal. Then you run an install script that will actually ask you a few questions. And then it, it goes in and adds itself into the performance metrics namespace. Uh, it does a configuration of the PMDA. And then it will actually notify PMCD. It says, hey, I'm out there. I'm running. Uh, start, you know, looking at the information that I'm gathering here. Uh, there are some uh, Ansible playbooks for installation of PCP. Uh, there's one they consider the one true repo for Ansible installations that's on a GitHub, uh, but it's not necessary to use that one because we do have a rail system role for it. Uh, it does require version five plus of performance copilot. And if you're setting up monitoring hosts or you're having uh, collectors, monitors connecting to collectors, you will have to call upon the uh, firewall and SE Linux playbooks also. So system roles also just to get all that set up and working correctly. So we have the PCP config files. There's there's quite a few of them, but these are some of the main ones that I've used. So I, I thought it was pertinent to point some of these out. Yeah, PCP.conf, which is all your directories and paths set up for performance copilot. Uh, performance copilot reads this file and boot, of course. Uh, if you're wondering where something's at when you're looking around the system, you can always uh, go in this file and find where something is located. The PMC.conf is is uh, one of the major ones for the collector daemon because it contains all of the entries about the PMDAs. It it tells you which PMDA is running and how it's connecting to the PMDA. There's usually three options that it chooses from depending on the the PMDA. You have DSO, which is a dynamic shared object. You have uh, a socket, and then you also have pipe. You can also, in this file, you can set up uh, access roles for hosts, users, and groups on the network. And when you do a default install, this file is built. So it's built on the fly. Uh, it's also updated when you install the uh, other PMDA. The options file is different options you can put in here. Uh, there's default options there that are all commented out. 
The only one that I found that I, I needed to use was uh, setting up the interface to, to see on, the, on a complete IP. And that's about it on that one. <laughs> so with PMWater config that default, I point this one out. So this is for PMWater when it knows what to record, archive data. It's built on install. So when PMWater starts for the first time, if this file is not available, it'll actually contact PMCD and say, how many uh, metrics do you have out there? And PMCD will let it know, and it will build this file. When you add other hosts on a monitoring host, it will have config.hostname. And if you need to update the configuration, you can use pmlog.conf, and you can it'll you run it against the config file, and it'll ask you different questions about what you want to monitor, how you want to monitor it, or your interval for monitoring it. And then when it gets to the end, it'll be a uh, it'll show you a diff of what the old file was versus the new file, and you just say yes to implement the new configuration. Log files, log files are pretty much where you find them, var log PCP. Each process has its own directory. PM logger itself by default will create uh, directories with host names. So they're all separated for you. Uh, again, the default configuration for loggers 14 days, you can increase it to 30, 60, however much you want it. Uh, you, you will have to uh, think about space requirements for logging for, for longer periods of time. Uh, you can also check your status of PM logger and PMCD information. Um, each host directory, host name directory has a PM logger file, which will give you lots of good information. They'll actually tell you what metrics are being logged. It'll give you uh, estimated values of how much data each metric is doing and the interval of which it is, which is really good information if you're trying to figure out space requirements. The setup archive logging is, is logging is real easy. All you have to do is just create a uh, client file uh, for PM logger on the control.d, etsy pcp, PM logger control.d directory. Uh, standard options is what we have here. The minus T24 that basically tells PM logger that I want to rotate my archive file uh, 10 minutes after midnight. You can also add in if you, the space requirement, if you don't need bigger archive files, you want them smaller. Uh, I've tried playing around with the minus V100 megabytes. So it will actually uh, rotate the file at 100 megs and then rotate it 24 hours. Uh, the PC log directory, that's actually how you, the, the actual variable there is how you put it in the file. Again, this is read from etsypcp.conf. So again, like I said, with the config.client, if there's not a client file, then PMLogger will attach to PMCD and gather the information and create its own client file and you can use the other command to adjust as needed. If you are doing remote connections, you need to check uh, etsy config pmcd, the daemon options, and make sure that remote connections is enabled, and you will have to start after making that change. So we get into the command line. This is uh, some of the heart of, of Performance Copilot. Um, if you're new to Performance Copilot, you can actually do a man PCP intro, which is very nice. Uh, it, gets, it covers some of the same information we're talking about here today. It, it'll go through collector versus monitoring host. It'll give you the main processes that are running. It'll even give you uh, common command line options. Uh, some of the command line options are usable between different commands. So you have a uh, minus A, which is for archive logs. You can use it to look at archive logs. Minus H is host name. You can actually connect to different hosts. So instead of Having to log into each host that you're looking for a particular performance data, you don't actually have to go log into each one. You can run it from, from your monitoring host or another host, so long as it has connectivity to that particular host for that. Uh, down the bottom of PCP free. So a lot of the commands that you use for performance monitoring in Linux today, PCP has a version of that. Some are pretty close to the exactly the same thing. Some are slightly different. But for everything that you do from VM stat to IO stat, it's available. Uh, PCP has an equivalent command for that. Uh, I will say that why would, you know, the question comes up, why would you run performance copilot over uh, your the normal commands you're used to running? There's, excuse me, several factors for that. One is uh, 
99% of the performance copilot commands you can run against archive files. So whether it be an IO stat or a VM stat or, or anything like that, you can run against archive and pull that data from any time period. You, you can't do that with most of the built-in Linux commands for performance analysis. It's just you can't take SAR data and run VM stat against it and get information out of it. It just doesn't work. They're all kind of their separate own thing where performance copilot puts them all together and they all work together. Uh, so you don't have to you have this available to you. Uh, I put in a PCP verify minus V. So once you get the install set up and running, if you want to verify that all your agents are running correctly, you can run this command and it'll show you that everything is status zero, which is good. Um, you can actually, you like to say the minus H for the host name, you can do a verify minus V against another host to confirm that it's set up and, and working correctly. Uh, and it's very good about this. I did have one that I had some issues with and it pointed out that it was, it was not good. They do have a, um, <coughs> excuse me. So PCP A top is, as you would think, is similar to top. It's um, default intervals 10 seconds. You can actually uh, configure it for, you can do an A.ATOP RC file. So if you want to customize ATOP, you can do that. Uh, the default's 10 seconds, starts with generic info, and as always, the question mark uh, gets you your help file. If you just want to look at yesterday's data, you do a minus Y. Uh, you can use ATOP. Like a lot of the performance copilot commands, you can use ATOP against an archive file. And I put a little minus B and minus E on the end of that particular command because you can actually look at certain time periods in your archive format. So, um, it's you know, 2.40 to 4 o'clock in the morning. Excuse me. So if you have an application admin or developer coming to you telling you you're having problems at a certain time period, then you can actually run against the archive files for that time period and figure out what your what your problem is. Uh, just the PM stat down here, similar to NP stat, like a lot of the commands, minus T is interval. Uh, the more command line stuff is PM info. So PM info will actually, if you just run it separately by itself, just run it like it is, so they'll tell you all the metrics that are available in a particular host. The minus T will actually give you a short description of each metric and what it is. And then if you go down, you can actually see more options you can add to it. Minus F will actually pull a uh, uh, the current the current value for that command. And this command also works on archive files. You probably hear me say that a lot because that's one of the big things in performance compiler is being able to get data out of archive files. So now we have PM rep. PM rep is a metrics reporter. And uh, so you can, uh, the minus P is for timestamps. So you can use that for timestamps when, when you're running this command. Um, you can add in another host, minus H. Metric Porter is kind of nice because you can add in uh, more metrics at one time. This is still a network interface, total bytes. You can add disk in there. You can add kernel load. You can add several at once so you can see them all at the same time if you're looking for something specific. Again, this uh, runs against archives. PMVAL, I mentioned that. It's one of the earlier commands that was shipped with Performance Copilot. It's still it's still available. It's part of uh, if you do like a minimum install, it'll still be there. It's still installed, and it's just kind of like everything else. It you know you, your minus T for interval values, minus S for sampling. Um, you can also run it against archive files. So I put some references in here. So we have a KB article that will actually list out your your PCP tools or legacy tools. So if you want to do a cross-reference, this is a great document to have handy so that easily you can cross-reference what you know you used yesterday to what you will now start using with Performance Copilot. 
uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 monitoring and management system status performance guide actually goes through a whole section of setting up and installing performance copilot. It even actually goes through and uh, says you had to set up Grafana, how to connect Grafana, and even base them up, set up some basic alerting with Grafana. If you want to know more about Performance Copilot, we have this KB article that actually has tutorials and solutions and uh, white papers for you. The tutorial is actually kind of nice. It, you can download a uh, archive file and run certain commands on it. And uh, it, it, it's actually got some stuff that I didn't even realize it was, it was capable of. There's a uh, PM, log, PM log extract. So you can take multiple archive files and you can merge them together and you can make, uh, if you're looking for data over a period of days, you can take several days worth of data and combine them into one and then you can load in like PM chart, which is one of the GUI tools. And uh, externally, you have the PCP.io website. There's a nice intro page there. It's sort of like set up like the intro page on, on uh, the PC, man PCP intro. And below that PCP copilot. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, GitHub page. So now I'd like to go into a small demo. So just real quick, I just want to show you this. Um, pull this up a little bit so you can see it. So this is the side-by-side -side comparison of uh, legacy tools versus the PCP tool. So IO stat, you have PM IO stat. Some of the commands are real nice like that. They're real close to, to what you're used to using. Uh, DM stat, free, uptime. Just just a heads up, just a you know, nice to have. I hope everybody can see this. So this is actually my monitoring host uh, that I have set up in my home lab. So I just type PCP by itself. It gives me the performance copilot configuration. So it gives you your platform, your hardware, time zone, uh, what services are running, excuse me, the version, but PMDAs are running. And since this is a monitoring host, my PM logger has three different uh, Logger configuration is going. It's for this host. I log it on this host and then two other hosts that are out there. You can also run this particular command against a archive file in order to give you the, the same kind of data. So I run it against this. But it's the same thing as what I just ran, but this is against archive. So this is an older RHEL 7 box, uh, so it's got 4.3 version, but it's no big deal. It still runs and connects, no no issues, no problems with the versioning difference. Uh, this is what comes standard out of the Red Hat repos. Uh, I think and actually in RHEL 7, you have to enable optional to get performance copilot. <clears throat> but, you know, again, basic hardware configuration, things like that. So if you do the verify, we was talking about earlier, you see that everything seems to be running fine. Completed basic installation checks. There's nothing that shows that it's not working. And uh, if I do, uh, I can do it minus H. I connect to a different host, and there it is. There's that information also. You'll see that there's slightly different ones, but I added a couple for the monitoring host that I needed. If you do PCP minus question mark, which is you know basic help you see at the bottom you have available commands so these are the stuff you can run with pcp so if you have pcp that looks very familiar it looks just like your your typical dstat command uh just for comparison there it looks exactly the same same with PCP free. We have that. And you can minus P minus M, put options on it as you would anything else. And same with free. So you 
even have the same kind of switches here between these two commands, which is very nice. You don't have to go memorizing a whole bunch of new stuff. It's, it's plug, plug and pray. Uh, a top. So this is your top. It, when your first loads, it shows you your uh, last boot activity. And up in the top right corner, it shows 14 days. That's how long the system's been up. And then after a minute or so, 30 seconds, it uh, shows you your processes, things. Um, the one thing nice about this is like there's thresholds set for CPU, memory, and disk. So if you're uh, going above those particular thresholds, it'll actually flash things in red. Uh, for example, if your CPU is over 90%, it'll actually turn red for you. Uh, the same with uh, memory. I think memory is maybe 90. I don't remember off the top of my head. Here's your help screen if you need it. Um, they actually have GPU activity. I will say this. It's kind of interesting. I haven't loaded it because I don't have an NVIDIA video card at the moment, but they have a PMDA for uh, NVIDIA video cards, which I, I would just kind of like to see that. I think that'd be interesting. I'd really like to know what kind of metrics you're getting off of that. Uh, this is yesterday. Be the minus Y for yesterday. Uh, the yellow is threads. That's the number of threads are being run. You can do M for memory. Memory. CPU. Oh, well, and proxy is using a lot of memory these days. So it's Redis. I expect that. Uh, if you need to, you can actually run this against a log file if you want. I won't get into all that right now. Um, here's the piece of the man. Here's your intro page. Just a quick look. Like I said, it's got all the information. So if you're new, this is a great page. There's also user shared doc. It's got some information in it. So there's another command here, PM dump log minus L. So this will actually go out and tell you information about your your logs, your archive logs. It'll tell you when it started, when it ended, and what host it's from, and the time zone. That's another thing to point out. A lot of the commands have a minus Z or little Z or a capital Z, depending on which one you want to use. So if you're in a different time zone from which your archive files are, you can switch it to get a better understanding so you can run that against the archive. It won't actually change it. You just tell it to use the particular time zone you're in and it'll make the data uh, a little more relevant for you when you when analyzing it. <clears throat> so we look at logging for a little bit, just for a quick second. So, so this is the log I was talking about earlier. So this is log, this is put in every directory with your host that you're doing archive logging for. And you have the different metrics and it says that these particular Looking here at the bottom, it says these metrics are logged every 60 seconds, and that's how many bytes or megs per day that it's logging. So again, this is great for you know if you're having trouble calculating the size you need for archiving for number of hosts. These are logged once. Um, it'll give you that information for you. So if I just do PM info by itself, there's all the metrics that are actually being logged on this particular host at this time. Uh, not sure which one it is. Throw in the minus T for a short description. So there's everything that we're saying. Um, PM logger, I mean PCP itself actually uh, supports uh, bash completion. So if you don't remember exactly what something is, then you can just grab it or you can tab to get it. Uh, when you do minus s fetch so it fetches the current value for that particular metric so this one's got a few extra pmbas loaded from default but if i count how many i've got 3500 particular metrics running at this time uh, and that's two extra pmbas that were loaded on this particular machine so there's quite a few things that are enabled out of the box and Performance Copilot is very um, stable and it's not resource intensive. So even with all this stuff running, you don't even notice that it's out there. I think like I may have seen like 0.1 CPU being used for this 
on the monitoring host, it, it uses a little more. That's because I have PM proxy running and, and Redis running in the background to feed Grafana. So yeah, your, your resource will be a little bit more used there, but that's not really performance copilot itself. That's more of the external stuff that it needs to do. <clears throat> So again, connect to a different host. So I want to know my kernel all loaded on a host that I'm not even logged into. It'll come back and tell me the values. If you did an uptime on that host, it'd pretty much be close to the same thing. <clears throat> so I have uh, PM rep. So one of the cool things about PM rep is you can, like I said earlier, you can put several metrics together. So this is basically saying I'm doing an interval of one second. <clears throat> I want to look at, I want my timestamps. I want to see my kernel load and all my disk writes and disk reads. Even as a monitoring host, I've only got 0.1 CPU being used, so it's not it's not working at, uh, hardly at all. I, I could I could always load something to to make it do work, but so well also we have. Uh, so I said I had the Podman PDA loaded over on another host. So just real quick, I will show you this. So my other host is this. Yes, this is Plex. So I'm running Plex in a container on this other host. So you can see the C group memory usage is being shout out right now and telling you I'm almost using a gig of memory for that. Now Plex is not doing anything right now and it's using a gig. Uh, so just kind of a cool little thing right there. So uh, we do have some GUI tools. Um, I'll show PM chart. Uh, this might be a little small. I'm gonna try to F10. PM chart is one of the GUI that runs in X. Uh, there you go. There you go. Let me show you this. So this might be a little hard to see. So you can start it up with options. You can actually start PM, uh, PM chart to run against um, other hosts, and you can do several hosts. So if you have a cluster of servers or databases or whatever, and you need to see all of them at the same time, you can do that with PM chart. A memory open. So there's memory and CPU utilization. Currently at one second interval, over in the bottom left corner, you have your time control. So if you don't like one second, you can set it up for five seconds, and click start, and it'll switch. You can add other hosts to it if you want to. Go back to that. You get your traffic over your disk rights, disk reads here. And there's IO stat running right there in the background. I'm not really doing much, so you're not really seeing much. Ooh, they got really small. So I run something like stress, which will tax out my my system a little bit more. We should see, yep, there it is. CPU utilization just jumped up. 100% and memory jumped up a little bit. If I go over to my disk traffic, you'll see a definite jump right there. And you can drill down to these. So I did talk about Grafana a little bit, so I will show you that. So this is the Grafana interface. Um, I particularly have mine set up for the Redis view. Their view. There's actually what they call PCP vector, which is another way to do it. Uh, it might take a second because I'm taxing my system. There it goes. So this is actually my, you can switch, since I've had several hosts set up in this, you'll see that uh, it defaults to six hours, so we'll just go to five minutes. And we'll see that the CPU is going way up. We see the load, load average going up. We see the memory is, is about normal. It's got your disk throughput, uh, your TCP timeouts, networking information. Usually I have, on this particular host, I have high latency on my disk. It's like 
I can explain that one. That's my home lab. I'm uh, connected stuff at NFS, so performance is not great, but it's not that big a deal for me. <laughs> and this is the host I particularly run. Oh, I'm texting the system too hard, so it's a little behind. It's trying to catch up with uh, the information. Uh, this one's not really doing much right now. Let me see, you can go back to seven days if you want, if you have it set up like that. So you can see little spikes in load average here. You can, you know, if you want to, you can drill down to exactly when. Um, what was this? So this was uh, 2200 on the 15th. That might have been me running something in Plex. But you can see how they all kind of match up. <clears throat> It's a nice tool, so you know you can say, "Oh, look! At this particular day and time, I had a spike in CPU." So you can actually uh, go back over to your archive files and dig through your archive files to see what was happening and what we were doing that particular day that this was spiked that high. So that's uh, that's pretty much. There's more commands. There's a lot more stuff. Don't have enough time to go through everything. Uh, Performance Copilot could actually be a four-day course, and you probably still wouldn't know everything about it. Uh, it's a great tool. I highly, I highly recommend it to most people or all people. Uh, I know support could use it because they can run all their commands against archive files. So I would suggest that everybody get it installed as soon as possible. So Brian, uh, I'll give it back to you for questions. Okay, if you want to turn off your screen sharing while I prep the first question, and Andreas, if you want to come back and join us, that would be great. Um, so we do have a number of questions that have come in while you've been presenting. The first one is from Kikella, I hope I pronounced that correctly, who says, given it's a demon, what kind of overhead should we expect when the performance copilot processes are running on the host machine, especially when we have all the components on the same host machine, such as the performance test tool, metrics monitoring, app, et cetera? Um, I can answer this. That's a very good question. So the, the core parts of PSP and a lot of PMDs are written in C and write <coughs> read metrics from ProcFS. So the, the basics, the overhead is quite small. But of course, it always depends on which um, agents you have installed how many metrics you're logging. <clears throat> so for example, if you log all process, processes and you have a lot of process churn, for example, you have some process starting every new second and just quitting again, you of course generate more load on the logging system. Another thing is, for example, you can either log the metrics on the host where you're monitoring, that, so you save the PCP archive files on the same host, or you can use a uh, a different host for it and connect to the host you want to monitor. Then of course it um, takes some load off your disk. And additionally you can also select um, how often you want to log it. So if you log every 10 seconds it of course generates more load than if you only log for example every minute. So in general I guess the answer is it depends. In general like and depends on your configuration. So I would suggest to um, try it out and measure it, maybe with PCP itself, and to see the impact on your specific use case. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Andreas. Um, so the next question is from Shane, who asks, is it a plan to port this over to Otel at some point, seeing as Otel is the industry standard way for metrics collection? Um, by OTEL, I think you mean open telemetry, right? I'm going to uh, say yes. I assume so. So open telemetry, it has, it's like a, a framework for traces, logs, and metrics. PCB only has metrics. And that said, we support the open metrics format. So I'm not, I assume open telemetry probably also uses open metrics format. It's also the format which Prometheus, for example, uses. So you can export PCP metrics in the open metrics format, and then you can import it with, for example, also Prometheus or I assume also open telemetry. And it also goes the other way around. So also with PCP, you can import metrics from the open metrics format. 
So if you have, for example, I saw some other question about node exporter. For example, you can also use PCP to import metrics from the node exporter. Okay. And Shane did uh, confirm that he was talking about open telemetry. So, okay. Thank you. And then the next question is from Andre, who says that he, um, he has customers that operate in a disconnected enclave scenario. Are there any in internet access requirements needed? In this case, you would have to have at least one dedicated host to capture um, all hosts in that disconnected or disconnected enclave, correct? Um, sort of like how Red Hat Insights work. So um, PCP is quite flexible. So for example, if you have one host which doesn't have any access to anything, you can, for example, install um, PM logger on the same host, then you have the data only locally. If you have like a bigger network which is disconnected from like disconnected from the outer internet, but still you can you can also make like how you said in the question, a dedicated host which then connects to the other hosts and stores the metrics. So I would say the answer is yes. You don't need any connectivity to the cloud, for example. You can have everything in your local network. Okay, good to know. The Baptiste asks, um, um, they've tested a Performance Copilot and Grafana on RHEL 8 for a customer, but it lacks out of the box alerting integration, like with Prompteus and Alert Manager. Is there a plan to improve this functionality? There is actually, um, with Grafana, you can set up alerting when you use the um, PCP Redis integration. So you can set up alerting in Grafana, to, which then sends you emails or Slack messages based on alerts. Also, there is another um, tool, part of the PCP toolkit, called PMIE. Jason uh, explained it uh, a few minutes ago. And with that tool, you can also um, set up alerts based on rules. And you can, for example, start shell scripts or a log to syslog and yeah, react upon your metrics. So actually, it comes with alerting. OK. Uh, Kalyan asks, is this an extension to Red Hat Insights? Or if it isn't, how is it? How does Performance Copilot uh, differ from Red Hat Insights? So it's, um, it's, there is a plugin, or I think it's called a plugin for Insights, that Insights can um, use PCP to um, react on specific metrics, also using PMI, and then you get alerted in Insights when, for example, your disk load is too high. So it's actually, it can be combined, and PCP is doing the continuous monitoring and logging, and then Insights can react based on the results of PCP and PMI. So PMI is called Performance Metrics Interference Engine, and it's basically evaluating rules based on your historical metrics or current metrics. Okay. Um, we're almost out of time. I think I have what we have time for one more question. I'm going to combine a couple of these questions into one. How is Performance Copilot different from other performance code uh, or performance collectors like Node Exporter? And then again, open telemetry. The node exporter is basically the part of what we call agents, they're like performance metrics domain agents. And node exporter, for example, only exports, um, like it doesn't store anything, it's just the part which exports the metrics. And we have, like in the PCP terminology, we call them agents. So in that way, they are similar. And as I mentioned before, they are both interoperable because the node exporter exports metrics in the open metrics format, which you can read from PCP. So you can store the data from node export in PCP. And if you, um, because you're talking about node export, I assume you use Prometheus or OpenShift monitoring. You can also connect OpenShift monitoring or Prometheus and create metrics from PCP, from PCP agents. For example, we have like currently almost 100 different agents and you can yeah, if you, for example, have already OpenShift monitoring set up, 
you can use this to log matrix from to our matrix also from PCP. And the other one, the OTEL. Yeah, as I mentioned, I don't have much experience with open, tel um, open telemetry. As far as I know, it's a combine of traces, metrics, and logs. We have the metrics part. And I assume they're using also the open metrics format. So if that is the case, you can, yeah. PCP is doing the metrics part basically of this open telemetry, the entire observability stack, and you can, if they use open metrics format, you can also use it. You can use it. All right, excellent. Well, that is it for our time. I know that there are other questions still in the Q&A tool. We will pass those along to our guests and they can answer them at their convenience. So in, until then, we thank you all for joining this episode of Community Central. Jason and Andreas, thank you so much for coming on today and talking about Performance Copilot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining and thanks for the great talk, Jason. That was really great. Thank you. Indeed. All right. Well, that wraps up another edition of Community Central. Join us in two weeks for another episode that talks about new technology and community events that are happening within the Red Hat ecosystem. Until then, my name is Brian Proppet with the Open Source Program Office. Be safe, be well, and have a great day.